Hey, welcome to Expats Everywhere. Tell us, what's your name, where are you from, and a little of your background. No problem. My name is Michael Bartolome. I'm from California, close to San Francisco specifically. I went to UCLA, I have a degree in English literature, and from there, I had a variety of different jobs. I worked in the film industry for a while, and then I did some uh, corporate marketing, at which point I caught the travel bug and decided that I needed to find a job abroad. Okay, so now that you're an expat, uh, what countries have you lived or worked in? Uh, my, the initial country I went to was Thailand. I had a few reasons for that. I wanted something that was uh, vastly different than the Western culture that I grew up in. I wanted something that was a, uh, a cheap way of life because I wanted to stretch the savings as far as I could. I uh, did that for a couple of years and then you know, wanted a big change of pace again. So I went to Prague and lived in Europe for a year. And then uh, I ran out of all that savings, so I came to Saudi Arabia to replenish it. Right, that's a pretty common story, I think. Uh, so what is it like working in the Czech Republic, and Prague specifically? Um, it's, a, it's a really interesting place to work because um, it, it's quite simple to find a job, and I'm sure we'll get to that in detail more later, but um, it's, uh, you're, you're in the heart of Europe. So if you have enough money, you can travel anywhere you want. If you don't, you live a bohemian lifestyle, which is also really not bad. Right. So what kinds of jobs are available in, in Prague or Czech Republic? Well, I, as it, with any major European city, there are going to be international schools. So if you have the qualifications for those, uh, those, those are great. Uh, the vast majority of people, probably I'd say 80% of people, work for schools that have contracts with businesses around the city, um, engineering firms, banking firms, uh, all of which are doing international business and thus need English-speaking employees. So uh, you will spend a lot of your time going around the central parts of the city from one business to the next, teaching small groups of adults, usually say three to at most, the maximum I ever had was 10 adult students. Um, however, another route that you can go, which is much more stable and doesn't require as much moving around, is a kindergarten. Uh, there are a lot of preschools and kindergartens. They actually tend to pay more money and you stay in a single location. It's just the educational objective is different. You're, you're dealing with four and five year olds as opposed to sure. adults with engineering degrees. So it's, it you know, depends on, on what your sort of um, focus is. Okay. Education. What did a typical day look like for you at your job? Uh, my day varied depending on how many classes that I had to teach that day, but it's, it's a lot of getting around the city, which uh, at first is great because you're at eight o'clock in the morning, you're at one part of the city, you're on a tram ride through you know, what looks like a fairy tale to the next, the next class, and uh, sometimes you have gaps of you know, an hour and a half or two hours in between classes. Um, after you've done this for a while, it can get a bit taxing because mm -hmm. you, you know, I, I began to appreciate the days where I could just go to a single location and teach at that location. Uh, but but it is it is a really interesting way at first to get to learn the city via the places that you're teaching. Okay, great. And how much can you expect to earn there? What's the salary range like? Um, the salary range, if you work at one of the preschools or kindergartens, which I mentioned, is pretty stable. If I remember correctly, it's about 30,000 Czech crowns per month, which is uh, you know, a little over a thousand US dollars. And that, okay. that's um, maybe a bit more than that. It's, it's enough to live fairly comfortably in Prague. Um, if you're teaching at different businesses around the city, that depends on your level of hustle, basically. Uh, some of the schools will offer you what they call a full-time contract, which will be enough to live in the city, but it won't be enough to travel, really. And uh, if, you, if you get extra classes, which there are, you know, there are people that teach a significant number of private classes, you make more money for those, and if you can get some that are coming in consistently, then you can get your salary up to a range where you can begin to, to travel to some of the nearby destinations outside of there. Okay. Uh, do you think this is enough money, and what kind of lifestyle can you live on on a thousand dollars? Well, it, it it truly depends on on the type of lifestyle that you want to live. Um, I I had friends that lived there that absolutely loved the city, and they saw no necessity to leave 
more than once or twice a year. In which case, you're, you're fine. You can pay for all of your food. You can pay for drinks on the weekend. You can go out to dinner when you want to. Um, you know, food, food and drinks are, are fairly cheap. Rent is quite inexpensive. So it doesn't take that much to get by and, and live in you know, one of the great cities of Europe. But uh, I lived one tram stop from the main train station. And uh, you know, it was tough to see travelers in there every day as I was going to work and they were you know, going to Berlin or going to Vienna or going to Budapest. And I wasn't getting the chance to explore Europe as much as I wanted to for financial reasons. Okay, well, would you say that this salary is enough to save? Uh, I think, again, like I said, it can really vary. Like if you're at one of the kindergartens, you can save a bit. If you really are a hustler and you have a lot of, you have a lot of um, uh, classes that are you know, with students that are paying you personally, then of course you can save a bit. But you're not going to put thousands of dollars away. Okay. Well, that answers that question for sure. I think a lot of people are curious to see if they can save money in a different uh, job abroad. Um, how much money does someone need to start up in Czech Republic? Um, it depends on how quickly you line up a job and how quickly you line up a place to stay. But um, in general, I think that you would need probably 4000 US dollars to, to get set up. Okay, and should someone go there uh, with a job offer already in hand or can you go there and, and get a job? I, I can't stress this strongly enough. You will not find a job online in Prague. It just won't happen. There's, there's too many teachers and it's too easy to fill that demand. Uh, that said, um, I, I showed up, I got a, a check phone number, I sent out resumes to three or four companies and I got interviews and job offers from all of those companies. So. If you're there, you're present and can interview, finding a job is quite easy. Okay, so we're excited, we're ready to move to, to Czech Republic. Um, what should we pack? How should we pack? What's the weather like? Uh, well, it's, it's Central Europe, so it is, you know, during the summer it, it's hot and, and you know, bright blue skies, but that summer is very short and uh, the winters can be cold. Um, in, say, the uh, November, December, time it's really really beautiful cold but really beautiful and then it can be pretty gray and, and grim in Jan, Feb, sometimes into March and April depending so you need a heavy jacket you'll need scarves you'll need boots you'll you'll need the all, all the, uh, the cold weather gear okay uh, what are things that you can't find in Czech Republic that you should bring from your home country uh, really there's there's nothing that you would need to bring from your home country like it's you know it's one of the capitals of Europe, you can find anything that you want there. Okay. Um, is it safe there? Did you feel safe personally? Were there any incidences where you didn't feel safe? No, not at all. It's it's very safe. I lived in a, a neighborhood called uh, Zizhkov, and Zizhkov is, you know, supposedly one of the, uh, the sketchier, if you will, neighborhoods in the city, and it it's not. It's it's beautiful. It's historic. It's it's you know a little grungier perhaps than the city center, but that's what you want if you're out in the neighborhoods. So. Awesome. Um, how did you meet people when you were there, and what did you do for fun? Well, the uh, the school that I that I ended up accepting a job with, had, they employed over a hundred teachers, which is not really that unusual. Uh, there's a few schools in the city that that employ that number, okay. and um, you know. I had a couple of classes that were there, and they had a big library area at the school, where uh, you know at any given time during the day there'd be there'd be teachers there, lesson planning and and, and just chatting, getting to know each other. Coincidentally, someone that a uh, group of my hometown ended up having a job at that same school, and wow. we just bumped into each other in the library. So you know you never know when you're abroad, right? Small world for sure. Yeah. So what did you do for fun? Um, you know. Prague is such an incredible city that, you know, honestly, one of the first things that I did when I, when I got there was I intentionally got lost. I just walked around, I turned down side streets, and, you know, when you, when you make a wrong turn in Prague, you're probably going to run into a castle. So it's, <laughs> it's really a pretty incredible place. Um, beer is notoriously cheaper than water. It is uh, a place that a lot of tourists will come through on a, on a daily basis. So you, you know, people watching is, 
is never an issue. And um, day trips outside of the city are easy to arrange and, and cheap. So there's, you, you wouldn't, will never ever run out of options and things to do. So, okay. Well, that actually leads me into the next question. Do you think that Prague, uh, or Czech Republic for that matter, is a good travel hub? Uh, I think it's one of the best travel hubs in Europe, if not the best travel hub. Why is that? So, um, low cost of living compared to many of the other cities that are around it. And uh, because it's in Central Europe, getting, uh, getting to you know, Austria, getting to Hungary, getting to Slovakia is a matter of a few hours. But it's also not very difficult to take a quick flight to Italy, to take a quick flight to France or, or England. E everything really is, is very much accessible. And it's, it's part of the European Union, so you get that automatic 90-day visa even if you're just going to just going as a general tourist. Okay. Um, could you tell us what are the pros and cons of living there? Um, well, the pros are it's it's arguably the most beautiful city in the world, and it's small enough that it's very accessible. It's not a city like New York or Paris where you're going to live in a small section of the city and rarely venture out of that section. It the entire city is is can be your playground if you if you want it to be which is great. Um, it's, it's a really easy way of life. Um, you know, there's, there's travel options, it's, it's an easy way to make friends, the arts are there, so if you, know, you want to go to the opera, if you want to go to a museum, if you want to see a play, these things happen on a nightly basis, not, not a quarterly basis or a monthly basis, so every, everything is there. Uh, the cons are that you have to scratch out a living for the most part, so you have to either go with uh, savings already there that you can kind of siphon off if need be, or you need to you know, realize that you're you're there for to live the experience more so than to get well ahead. Okay, and uh, as we understand that you have a friend that uh, has some jobs available there. Or? Well, I have a, a friend of mine that runs a uh, TEFL school. In oh, Prague, wow! And it's called uh, TEFL Pro Prague. So T E F L prog.com. Uh, he's been teaching in the uh, ESL community in Prague for well over 10 years and he's been a, a, a TEFL trainer for a good majority of that. Um, he's someone that, that company in general, I have several friends that work there. It's a good, it's a good place to contact as, as um, a starter. If you don't have your TEFL, it's a great place. It's in the center of the city, so it's a great place to study and to then find a job. If you are already certified, you know, the, the TEFL schools are very well connected, globally speaking, very well connected to the ESL community. And that would be a good starting place, I think. Okay. About how much does the program cost, do you know? Um, you know, I think it's about 1300 U.S. dollars for the basic program. And, okay. you know, they have uh, schedules throughout the year. So. Okay, great. Uh, lastly, what's next for you? Uh, well, I'm finishing up here in Saudi Arabia, and I'm actually finishing up teaching. Um, I own a hostel in Koh Tao, Thailand. It's called the Taco Shack Hostel and Restaurant. So uh, look us up on Hostel World, or if you find yourself traveling Southeast Asia, pop by and say hello. Awesome. Can you give us that name again? Yeah, the Taco Shack Hostel and Restaurant. Okay, cool. We'll try to put a link there. Okay. Um, we really appreciate, appreciate you meeting with us. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. All right. Best of luck. All right. Bye.